amazing creatives. I'm so glad you could join me in the studio again today. Today we're going to make bubbles. I'm so excited to show you this technique and it was all made possible by a wonderful video by Teresa Kovalak. She's an amazing, amazing alcohol ink artist. So let's first take a look at the supplies you're going to need. And to start this project, you're going to want to do a dry run and arrange your glasses to get an idea of how you want to place them once you put the alcohol ink down. So once you've done that with your glasses, you're going to move them out of the way. And next, you're going to take your alcohol inks and splatter them across your UPO paper. In these little tiny solo cups that are so cute, um, I have mixed a little bit of alcohol ink and some regular 91%, I think I used 91% alcohol, and mix it together. It's just a, a little bit of, of alcohol and just a squirt of alcohol inks in different colors. And you'll splatter those across your page. I think that there's a better way to do this because my purple winds up taking over and I didn't get as much of the yellow or the pink or even the green, but this is what it turned out. After many practice runs, this is what I got, so I stuck with it. Teresa does a much better job in her video if you want to check her out. I will leave a link to her channel below in the description box. Teresa is a phenomenal alcohol ink artist if you've never watched her videos. She makes these bubbles. She was kind of the inventor of this technique. And she does these fantastic paintings with alcohol. She, You really need to check her out if you haven't seen her before. And even if you've watched her before, check her out again. She really does some amazing little paintings. So I'm going to take my Revlon dryer and dry some of the alcohol inks and spread them around a little bit. And Teresa doesn't use a Revlon dryer. She actually uses a Conair dryer. And I have a hard time with that dryer because it doesn't have a cool setting. And I'm just not talented enough to use a hot dryer on a piece of Upo. Teresa does it, but I can't seem to make it work. So you don't have to use a Revlon dryer. You can use any dryer that you have available. And I've placed my glasses on my Upo, and I'm going to dry the rest of the alcohol ink. That's what I'm doing now. Your glasses, sorry for my arm, your glasses, some of them, if they're not heavy enough, will slide around on the ink once you start drying it with the dryer. So if you just put a finger on top of the glass and hold it still while you dry the ink around it, that seems to work pretty well. That's why my arm was in the way, because I was holding a glass down. So you're just going to keep drying the ink all around your glasses so that the ink on the outside of the glasses is totally dry. And it doesn't take long, it just takes a few seconds, depending on how much ink you have on your paper. There goes that glass again, sliding around. That was the only glass I had trouble with. Now you're going to want a, a bunch of glasses in different sizes so that you have a, a large range to choose from. Teresa gives this fantastic idea of going to a thrift store to find your glasses and that's exactly what I've done every time I've been up by ARC or Goodwill I just run in and see what kind of glasses they have and pick up different sized glasses so I'm lifting the glasses up and drying the ink underneath and when my hand is on a glass for a while like it is now I'm just lifting up one edge of the glass and trying to dry the ink underneath before I lift the entire glass up. That one glass wasn't finished yet, so I just put it back down on the paper to leave it so that it could dry a little bit more before I lifted it up. You want the ink that's under your glasses to stay under your glasses so that the rim of the glass leaves a mark in the alcohol ink. That one worked pretty well. But you can see when I lift some of the glasses up, the ink is still kind of wet underneath. And I'm trying to chase the ink back so that it stays within that circle. The better circle you get, the easier it is to make the bubble. Teresa is really good at keeping her ink 
separated between the outer ink and the ink that was under the glass. I'm not as good as she is. But like I said, I did several practice runs with this technique. It is not as easy as Teresa makes it look at all. So I stuck with this one because it was the best one that I got out of the bunch that I tried. And I did try on a long piece of Yupo. Um, I want to say it's like, I don't know. I don't know, maybe 15 inches long by six inches wide or something. I'm not quite sure of the dimensions of the Yupo paper. I should have written those down. But I apologize, I didn't. But I wanted to get a kind of cascade bubble feeling. So I'm just drying the rest of the alcohol ink that was under that last glass. And like I said, it doesn't take long to do this at all. It's more about your talent and skill with keeping the ink separated. So now we're going to draw, now that we have our ink dried, we're going to draw in the details so that our bubbles really pop. Ha ha ha, I think that's so funny, get it? So our bubbles pop. First, you're going to want to place your glass back on the bubble that you used it for and just trace around it. It's not difficult. The hardest part I have is figuring out which glass I had that made which bubble. So you can see I figured out the long, the large bubbles, the large glasses, but I have a hard time with this part because I can never match them up perfectly and I can never figure out which glass made which bubble. So although I figured out the large ones, for the small ones I just freehanded the design and that was fine with me. It doesn't matter to me if they're a little bit wobbly or off, off center. It's pretty easy to outline the bubbles because you have the indentation in the ink from where the glasses were. So it's a pretty easy process to figure out even without the glasses. I like Teresa's method of using the glasses on the bubbles, but... I am just not skilled enough to figure out which bubble went to which glass. So you're going to want to trace around the outside of the circle and then add some lines inside your bubble, just like real bubbles look with the reflections. You add those to the insides of your bubbles and it really creates a very defined bubble look. It really draws out, that white ink pen really draws out the bubble look. So you keep adding these oblong triangles, kind of, I guess is the best way to describe what they are. Some of them I fill in and some of them I leave blank on the inside. I feel like that gives a more realistic bubble look. And sometimes I just add a curved line to the inside of the bubble. So I make more than just the long triangles. There you can see I'm just making lines. Sorry, my nose is all stopped up again. It seems like every time I go to make a video, I either have an allergy attack or my nose just gets stopped up or something like that happens. So there I'm making some more long triangles. I'm filling that one in. Really not difficult. If you can draw a triangle and you can draw a curved line, then you can make these bubbles. I'm just finishing up drawing the lines on some of the bubbles. I hope everyone is staying healthy and safe. I know that... I am climbing the walls. I will be very glad when all of this is over. It will be nice to be able to get out and see people again. I have been self-isolating since all of this began and, and they first mentioned it because I've got some health problems that make it so that if I get COVID, it would not be a good thing. So that's it. Just keep adding those curved triangles and those curved lines and you've got yourself some bubbles. I hope you enjoyed this video. I enjoyed making it for you. 
I hope to see you in my next video. Thanks for watching. Take care of yourself, please, and check in on each other. It was good to see you. Thanks for watching. Bye.